I'd like to introduce Donna Wolf Seconder, who's the estate manager here. Donna, you um, started as the estate manager, didn't you, when the um, scheme was just um, being finished? Yes, I started here in 2000, um, um, from handover. Mm. And we were sheltered for about five years, well not about five years, we were sheltered for a good many years. And then eventually became extra care about three years ago nearly. Um, and it's tremendously different to sheltered in that everything takes extra care, as it's called, it's extra everything, extra time, extra patience, um, which I think I manage it basically with a lot of humour. Um, I find that that helps the site here at St Catherine's Court. We're a little different um, because we are um, a very diverse group. There are lots of different types of people here and uh, we all live happily together, believe it or not. Um, as hopefully you'll meet some for us. Okay. I'd like to introduce Helen from Hanover Court, Cinderford. Helen, when did you start working for Hanover? Um, I started in August 1998 and the scheme had been open then for six months. And um, I came in in the defects period and um, it was really, really busy. And can you describe life at Cinderford? Was it, was it like living there? Right, um, busy. <laughs> um, We've got a team of carers on site and most of our residents actually have a care plan. Um, we've got cleaners that come in, caterers because most people have a midday meal and we've got support workers coming in and out to do other support as well. Um, the residents are quite involved actually because we have a residence meeting once a month where we talk about Hanover and the things that they do but also what the residents want to be involved with. Um, with regard to social acti activities and things like that. So they decide what they want to do, what trips they want to have, what, you know, things we want to raise for money for charity, which we do quite a lot. And we do extend exercises. And the community are quite involved with that as well, the local community, because we know most of the groups and we like them to come in, mix with us, that sort of thing. May I introduce you to Sharon Symes, uh, the Independent Home Life Service Coordinator, the caregiver on site here at St Catherine's Court. Sharon, could you tell us a little bit about your job? Um, as care coordinator based here at St Catherine's Court, um, we supply care packages to the clients that require them. The care packages are set up by social services. Um, they come to us and then we review them and once a client comes in with the care package set, we can then say whether it's working or not after six weeks and the social worker will come back and assess it. Because um, sometimes in their own home environment they might need extra care to help upstairs, they might have problems through doorways and things like that. But because this is a purpose built building, they do find it a lot easier and usually the care package is dropped after they've been in for a few weeks. And as do you enjoy the job? Mainly. <laughs> yeah, mainly. Yes, mainly. it is very good. Yes. Mainly. You do get your bad day, but you do everywhere you work. Yes. From a care point of view, it's a very good setting. It's a lot better than working in the community because you've got everything in one place. You're not driving from A to B and you set have a set amount of time with each client and it's nice to spend that time with that client rather than having interruptions. Mm. Rex Blatchley. Rex, you've lived at St Catherine's Court for some time. Seven years, yeah. yeah. Where were you living before you when you moved here? Down Stroud Road in a, in a that's it. Mm. And, and what was that like? That was very basic, very, it was more or less a makeshift sort of place for me. I, and what do you think of life at St Catherine's Court? I think it's brilliant. I've done a lot back since mm -hmm. the day. I've come to know everybody so helpful. And over and down that are very, you know, the things you, if you get any problems, it's sort of no problems. Yeah, such a positive story, thank yeah. you. But I do think that there's, there should be more of these places mm. built as well. Mm. Thank you. No problem. That's it. Um, Mr and Mrs Mike, mm. Peter and Marjorie, yeah. uh, thank you very much for wanting to say hello to us. Um, how long have you been here and um, can you explain your story to us? Well, I've been here about three and a half years. And, um, well, I'm happy to be here. If it wasn't for 
this a place like this, I would end up in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. Which I'm very grateful for Hanover. And I am comfortable. I love it very much. It's like from home to home. Mm. How are you getting on with the care staff? Very well. a relationship with yes, them? Yes, very well. They're ever, they're ever so nice. They're brilliant. Mm. Yes. You're always there. If, if we need anything, we just have to ask. And what, if you be. can help, yes. you are there to help to yes. do it help us out. Yes, and like I say, it's a very, very rewarding job. I enjoy it very much indeed. Mrs. Yes. Yes. Wakeham, um, been with us for quite a while now. Um, please, can you tell us your story? Seven yes. years this, this year. year. This year, yes. seven years we've been here, which started over seven years ago when I had two heart attacks, two mini strokes, which left me in predicament of coping with the house. We made contact with Donna and from there on we progressed into moving in for my health reasons where there would be, if and when necessary, support for me in, if I had any problems. But taking that a step further, it wasn't very long after that Jan had made just cancer surgery. Um, from there she's developed into lymphedema patient plus a rheumatoid arthritis patient which makes it very difficult for her to do anything at all. Um, so there is another big plus for living in one of these sheltered accommodations. We now have two people who need to care for one another and may, in the future, require further assistance from the establishment. As we are at the moment, um, here is like being in your own establishment. You come and go as you please. If you wish to participate in anything that's going on, then you do so. But you have your own front door and you come and go as you please. So you live a, really a life as you want to live it. Without the Without worries. Without the worry of um, can you cope? Because there is always someone on hand to give you assistance. You, you yeah. are not virtually on your own. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Dave Hanks. I'm Hanover On Call Manager and I've been manager for the last two years and I'd like to introduce you to my team. Hello, my name is Lynn Burr and I am the Assistant Manager here at Hanover On Call and my main responsibility is to ensure the smooth running of the call centre. Hello, my name's Jane Corley, I'm the Hanover On Call team leader. Hello, I'm Linda Anderson. I'm the Training and Development Officer at Hanover On Call. I'm responsible for training all the new staff in the control centre and also heavily involved with the State Manager Modular One training where they visit Chippenham and learn how they can work better together with us. This is Roger Harris, one of the Estate Managers visiting, visiting Chippenham as part of his induction and Module 1 training, yeah, sitting right? with Karen, one of our operators oh, within the control centre. Hanover and Call is Hanover's telecare I response centre. We take an average of 1,000 calls per day. These are answered on nine terminals where we use a John Tech call handling system and they're manned by 36 full and part-time staff working a shift system. When a call is received, it comes through on Hanover's core handling system and shows as on these core handling stack. The call is then answered by an operator and the screen displays the resident's details including their contacts, their medical history and their personal details. Good Hanover on Call currently monitors calls from 20,000 residents from Hanover Group and other external organisations, uh, as well as monitoring alarms, door entries and fire alarm systems, we're increasingly moving to supporting telecare appliances including fall detectors, flood detectors 
bed occupancy sensors and other telecare equipment.